Hello. Today we're briefly going to discuss centripetal force. Centripetal force is defined as the net force on an object that it must undergo in order to maintain a circular path. Okay? Because it's a net force, let's highlight that just to make sure that we see that. Centripetal force will not be on a free body diagram, only in your summation equation. Okay? Um, if the object travels at a constant speed, only its direction is changing when it's in a circular path. So the force is always going to act toward the center of that circular path. So let's just say, for example, our object is right here. Okay? It's traveling around a circular path. The force, if we were to put on a free body diagram, it would be toward the center. That's where our centripetal force would be located. Okay? Our net acceleration is in that direction as well. But we're not going to have that there. Okay, instead, we're going to have some forces that combine to cause it to travel on a circular path. Okay, so if this is a top view of a car going around a circular path. Okay, so let's say the car is traveling in this direction. I'll make the yellow line to show where the velocity is going. Okay, so the car is traveling like this. There must be something that causes the car to stay in the circular path. Okay, and that's what we're going to be looking at when we look at centripetal force. I said it's going to be within your summation equation, and we know that the only places that forces that are not on the free body diagram can be in the, in the summation equation is after the second equal sign. So in this case, if we're looking at a top view, we know it's going to be horizontally traveling in a circular path, so the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction will equal, in this case it's probably going to be friction, which will equal the centripetal force. Okay. Next thing we need to know is what's the equation for centripetal force? And our centripetal force equation is equal to the mass of an object times its velocity squared divided by the radius of the path. So Fc equals mv squared over r. If we're looking at just centripetal acceleration, all we would do is just take that mass out because we know that F equals ma. So what's left over? That equals centripetal acceleration. Okay, so just in case you ever have to solve for that. Best way to look at these problems is just to look at a couple examples. So the first one is we have a horizontal circle. Okay, so the object is going to be traveling in a horizontal circle. So our view of our circle over here is going to be a top view. Okay, this is the top view. So let's just label that top view okay, of our coin. We have a 50 gram coin resting on a turntable 30 centimeters from the center of the turntable. If the linear speed of the turntable is estimated to be 1.2 meters per second at that point, what's the frictional force required to keep the coin from slipping? So the question pretty much tells you it's going to be friction. And if we look at that as our diagram here, we'll have the force of friction. It's going to keep it in the circular path. If we draw a free body diagram of our coin, we have its weight acting down. We have the normal force supporting it on the surface. And we have a frictional force that's going to keep it in the circular path. Okay? Let's keep that in mind when we set it up. Now we want to do our summation equation. And the sum of the forces in our x direction, because it's a horizontal surface, or horizontal circle, I should say, you know the net force in the horizontal direction is going to be Fc. The only force we have acting in the horizontal direction is that frictional force. So the sum of the forces in the x direction equals Ff, which equals Fc. Thinking back, remember, we know that the frictional force is mu times the normal force. Let me go ahead and plug in our equation here, here just to speed up the process a little bit. So mv squared over r. Okay? So we're trying to find mu. We know m, we know v, we know r. We need to know what fn is. So if we think back to our summation equations that we did last unit, we know the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be Fn minus Fg equals zero. Therefore, we know that Fn equals Fg, which in this case is just going to be Mg. So we can plug in and we can say mu Mg equals M V squared over R. Our M's do end up canceling out. And so we get mu g equals v squared over r. We've got to make sure that we are being aware of our units here. Okay? The r value 
is in centimeters, 30 centimeters from the center, from the center, okay? Therefore, we know that our radius is in centimeters. So if we plug in and we try to solve for mu, I'm going to go ahead and just give us a little bit more room to work with over here. And we say mu times 9.8 meters per second squared equals v squared over r. Our v was 1.2 meters per second. And our r was 30 centimeters or 0.3 meters. So we're going to plug that into our calculators. And we're going to say 1.2 squared, which is 1.44, divided by 0.3. So 1.44 divided by 0.3 is 4.8. Then we divide that by 9.8. And we get that the coefficient of friction required for the coin to stay still is equal to 0 0.49. Okay? So that's how you do the problem. If you had a problem where a car was traveling around a circular path, you would address it the exact same way. The friction between the car's tires and the road are going to be what's going to cause the circular path to be maintained. So the sum of the force in the x direction on the car would just be FF which would equal FC. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's look at a vertical circle. While we're off here. Alright, if we have a vertical circle, things are a little bit different. We have a 20 kilogram child traveling through a loop on a roller coaster. The radius of the loop is 20 meters, and the speed at the bottom of the loop is 12 meters per second. What's the normal frictional force, or the normal force exerted on the child at the bottom of the loop? Okay, so in this case, we have a side view. This is going to be our side view of the child. Okay? So a 20 gram child is going to be at the bottom. If we look at the forces acting on the child, we know that gravity is pulling the child down. The seat is supporting it upward. And if we have a, something supporting it, we know that's the normal force. Those are the only two forces acting on our object. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just redraw that over here. Okay? On our free body diagram. You can go ahead and do it on the circular on the circular picture or by itself. Okay, I'm going to do a little star. The green star right here will help us remember where the center of our circle is. Okay, because that's going to be important when we set up our summation equation. Our summation equation for this vertical circle, we know we have the normal force acting up, the frictional force is acting down. So, I'm sorry, the gravitational force acting down. Goodness gracious. So we know they must have opposite signs in the summation equation. Because it's traveling in a vertical circle, we know that the circle is going to be in the y direction. Therefore, the net force in our vertical direction is going to be centripetal force. Okay? So we have Fn minus Fg equals Fc. We're trying to solve for Fn. So if we rearrange our equation, we'll get that Fn equals Fc plus Fg. Okay? Which makes sense. If you've ever ridden a roller coaster before, you know that you feel heavier at the bottom of the roller coaster because you're being pushed down into the seat. So we go ahead and substitute in, we'll say Fn equals mv squared over r. So 20 kilograms times v squared, which is 12 meters per second, over the radius of the loop, which is 20 meters, plus Fg, which is 20 kilograms times g, so 20 times 12 squared, that's 144, times 20, which is 2,880, divided by 20 gives you 144 again, plus 20 times 9.8, which is 196, plus 144, gives us that the normal force that the seat pushes back up on the child is 340 newtons. Okay? But just like you've done before, the only thing that's different now is that your net force Instead of just being 0 or MA, now can be FC. And remember that the centripetal force will be the net force in the direction of the circular path. Okay, so keep that in mind. You should have no problems at all solve these problems. Thanks!